Devils. Um, friggin'. <laughs> First time since I moved to Grand Rapids and I put on a poster. <laughs> I decided to take a note from um, Tim Murtaugh School of Preaching. And I think I look pretty good on that. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 says, hey, it's the Lord. And Peter goes, whoa. And he jumps out of the boat and he swims to shore. 
and the rest of us is just kind of there. And it gets to meet with Jesus face to face, and they get to have a conversation. We don't know what happened in that conversation, but what we do know is that then Jesus had a bring all the fish, and he made breakfast, and they all ate. So that's where we're at. It's that moment they finished breakfast, and Jesus and Peter are going to have a conversation. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved. Sitting on the beach after breakfast, Jesus had just asked him for the third time if he loved him. Peter had already wholeheartedly answered yes twice. What else was he supposed to say? With these questions, the Lord was putting a finger on a very tender wound in Peter's heart. Peter's failure on the night of Jesus' trial had been simply horrible. In the hour of our Lord's greatest anguish, Peter had denied even knowing him. This sin shook Peter to the core of his being. Jesus had told him he would do it. In John 13, 38, Scripture tells us, Jesus answered, Die for me? I tell you the truth, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times that you even know me. But in the upper room of the Passover meal, with all his fellow disciples all around him, Peter did not believe it. He could still hear himself declaring, I will lay down my life for you. John 13, 37 tells us, Peter said, But why can't I come now, Lord? I'm ready to die for you. He had no idea how weak he really was. He had imagined himself boldly standing before the Sanhedrin, protecting his Lord, side by side with Jesus, come one day. But that night, as Jesus was doing the very thing, Peter couldn't even stand before a servant girl. In John 18, 17, the woman asked Peter, You're not one of that man's disciples, are you? No, he said, I am not. I am not. Those words have hung heavy on heart for days on end. Those three words have kept Peter up at night in the boat. Those three words have echoed in his head, continually reminding him of his denial, reminding him of his cowardice, reminding him of his sin. He was supposed to be a rock. Jesus himself told him. In Matthew 16, 18, he says, now I say to you, Peter, you are a rock. And upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. That night, Peter had crumbled into pieces. He was not who he thought he was. Peter had never been less confident in himself. So when Jesus questioned Peter's love for a third time that morning, Peter believed that he might have lost the Savior's trust. He had failed, but he did love Jesus. And all he could do was appeal to Jesus' omniscience. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus did. In fact, Peter later realized what Jesus had done in that family conversation. He had not doubted Peter. Rather, <clears throat> he had allowed Peter to confess his love for every single wretched denial he had made that night. In John 21, verses 15 to 17, we learn part of this conversation. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I do. Then be my last. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Then be my sheep. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And the Lord had a word for Peter. In the future, there would be another 
opportunity to confess his love publicly in the face of great cost. The Lord said to Peter, follow me. Shame over past failures and sins can haunt and inhibit us in many ways. And Satan seeks to seek, excuse me, Satan seeks to steal and destroy our faith by shoving our failures in our face. But Jesus intends to redeem us completely. When Jesus chose you, all of you, to be his disciples, he foresaw your future failures just as sure as he foresaw Peter's. We may, we may not want to believe that we can ever deny Jesus by engaging in sin that contradicts everything we believe. We may not believe that we can turn our backs on Jesus. But Jesus knows what sin is in us. In John 2.25, we hear, no one needed to tell us what mankind is really like. So he exhorts us, along with Peter, in Matthew 26, 41, keep watch and pray so that you will not give any temptation. For the soul, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And when we do fail, and we will. We must remember what Jesus said to Peter before his failure. Luke 22, 32. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith will not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. When you have repented and turned to me again. Peter was going to sin. He was going to sit this week, and Jesus knew it. But Jesus had prayed for him, and Jesus' prayer is stronger than Peter's sin. And Jesus' prayer is stronger than our sin. Hebrews 27 25 tells us, Therefore he is able, once and forever, to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. He intercedes with God for us. And Jesus is the great restorer of failures who repent. Jesus had said to Peter, when you have repented, strengthen your brothers. And there on the beach, he again gave Peter the greatest invitation any one of us can have on earth. He said, follow me. The failure was left, was to be left behind. The sin was to be turned away from. There is kingdom work to do. There is God jobs to be done. There is eternal life to be enjoyed. There is praises to be sung. There is good news to be shared. Peter's failure did not define him, and ours will not define us. They are horrible. They are humbly stumbles upon the path of following Jesus, who paid for them all on, who paid for them all on the cross. But Jesus specializes transforming failures into victories. Jesus turns failures into rocks for his church. Follow me.